Hello everyone, my name is Squad and this is a video that will cover everything you need to know about Helminth, a system in Warframe that will make every single Warframe you have a living god by applying new abilities to them, increasing their ability strength, duration, efficiency and range, massively overpowering the weapons they use and lastly, the use of Archon Shards, which is something extremely powerful and can balance out every single Warframe in the game. But yeah, before I start, all the videos you can see in this video can be found in their separate forms on my channel. If you can, please like, share or comment on this video to help me in the YouTube algorithm, since these videos take quite a while to make. But yeah, without anything else, let's see how to get everything you need for the Hellman system. As I said, today we will talk about Helminth and the three basic functions it can do. Let me just quickly summarize them. The first function is not that special. You're able to get a new companion and a minor aesthetic operation to remove the pink cyst. The second function is a bit of a mid-game to late-game feature. It will allow you to sacrifice Warframes in order to get abilities out of them and then use those abilities with other Warframes at a cost of huge amounts of farmable resources. The abilities are also predetermined for every Warframe, so you can't combine everything. And the third function is purely a buff to Warframes that will change your gameplay completely for one week. But now let's go over all the functions one by one in more detail. First, the most basic function is available to everyone that has the pink cyst on their Warframe's neck. The pink cyst, what many call space aids, does not have any negative effects on your Warframe or your gameplay, but it is not aesthetically pleasing. There is two ways you can remove it. The first one is by getting to the back left door coming from the arsenal to the room of Helminth with a chair where it works. So yeah, by sitting on the chair and having the cyst, you can remove it. The door won't open if the cyst is not fully matured, so yeah, you have to wait a bit. With the first function, if you don't know, you can also infuse the cyst into a Kubro egg and get a special companion called Helminth. But this is not the point of this video, so let's go back to the functions of Helminth. The second function requires a segment you can buy from the brother at Necrolisk with mastery rank 8 and you also need to be rank 3 with the Entrati family. What we are looking for is the Helminth segment blueprint, which will cost you 15,000 standing with Entrati and a couple of easy to get resources which you can definitely already afford. Building the segment requires 24 hours, so yeah, you will also have to wait a bit. When the segment is done, pick it up from the foundry and place it into the Helminth. There should be a waypoint. This will allow you to do many things. Let's go over them. There is the Helmin's level on the top, and below it there are Warframe abilities which you will get by sacrificing Warframes to the Helminth. Next to those two things there is the Invigoration menu, which is unlocked with another segment and is the third function of Helmin's, so just imagine it is not there yet. We will go over it later. Now that you are seated in the chair, the first thing you will need to do is feed the Helminth which you can do by clicking the Feed Helminth in the bottom right corner. On the right side you will see 6 kinds of materials it needs to work with and on the left side you will see what you can feed him. If I, for example, click on the Biotics icon on the right side, I will see what I can feed him on the left. The green arrow usually means 30 percentage points up, no arrow means 15 percentage points up and the red arrow usually means 3 percentage points up. Why usually? Because there is some resources that are exceptions to this rule. For example, Pustolite, which will fill the meter up 2 times more than it should, so for the red arrow, 6 up. It is a very good resource to have. There is also a special group of resources called the Sentient Appetite, which will increase the appetite of Helminth for resources he dislikes, with the red arrow to normal and the ones from normal to the ones he really wants, so the green arrow. You will need quite a lot of these resources, so be careful with how you use them. Every percentage point of fed material will level up your Helminth by 6.66 experience points and you can see how much you leveled up by checking the experience on the left upper corner when looking at Helminth. Once you get to 2250, you will unlock its first level 
which will allow you to finally be able to subsume Warframes, and you will also get three subsuming slots, that number meaning how many Warframes you can sacrifice to the Hellmyth. So to repeat myself, subsuming means sacrificing a Warframe for one specific ability it can get you. For example, I can sacrifice Kaliban to get the Sentient Wrath ability from it and get it on any Warframe. Let's sacrifice him now. Subsuming a Warframe will get you 1600 Helmet experience, so it is quite good to use. A very important tip also is that you should sacrifice Warframes with zero things on them, Orokin Catalyst, Orokin Reactors, Forma and stuff like that, because you will lose them. Those Warframes are going to be gone. I suggest you get them right out of the foundry and sacrifice them right away to avoid hours and hours of lost progress on farming, new Warframes and stuff like that. A very important thing is also that the Warframe needs to be normal, not Prime or Umbra, so good luck with farming Octavia and Inaros and Oberon and Ash. Oh my god, you're in for a treat. Once the Warframe is subsumed, it will be sleeping on the wall for one day and after that, you will be able to infuse its ability into other Warframes. You can infuse this ability as many times as you want, it is infinite. A small fun aspect of subsuming Warframes is also the fact that every single sacrifice will grow a flower, so yeah, it's nice. That's all about subsuming, the next step is infusing the abilities into Warframes which is sometimes completely broken in a good sense and sometimes a massive setback to the user since some abilities are better than others. Let's use our big boy Grendel as an example here. Grendel's abilities don't really suit my playstyle, so I will replace one ability with something I want. For example, the ability Condemn, for which I had to sacrifice Harrow. Every ability you want to infuse will require some amount of resources that Helminth needs. For example, here I need Biotics, Synthetics and Bile. Helminth needs more Synthetics, so I will feed him. The amount of Helminth experience you will get with this by infusing abilities into other Warframes is 8 experience points per percentage point used in the infusion, so 20 Biotics, 62 Synthetics and 20 Bowels summed together and multiplied by 8 equates to about 800 Helminth experience, a little bit over, which is not a lot but it's still good. After you feed him, you will be able to infuse the ability into Warframes by clicking on the Infuse Ability option under the resources on the right. This will show a new window with your current abilities you have on the Warframe. This is the hardest part. You need to choose one ability that will be removed and replaced by the ability you are infusing into Warframe. Once you are done, you will get another option of choosing which configuration you want this ability to be on. I recommend choosing only one, maybe two of the configurations, just because you might not like the ability you infuse. For example, I'll infuse the Condemn ability into the C configuration. I now still have the normal Grendel abilities on the A and B configuration, but the Condemn ability is on the C configuration. If I go into a mission now with the C configuration, I can use Condemn as much as I want and run down enemies in a ball even easier. I love it. By leveling up Helminth, you will get more and more subsumed slots and also new Helminth abilities I will go over them in a different video in detail, but to let you know, some of them are extremely useful to the point of not being able to play without them. Another tidbit I really need to mention is the restrictions of abilities. There is three of them. Some Warframes do not allow to have more than one of the same ability type, for example Strength. Mirage here can only get Roar from Rhino in exchange for Eclipse, a bad trade-off if you ask me. The second one is that you can infuse only one ability into every configuration, for example I have the Empower ability on Mirage's A configuration and the Golden Instinct ability on the B configuration. Sadly you can't replace all the abilities for your Warframe, but this is what it is. And the third tip is actually nice, the augments for abilities that are infused into your Warframes can be used on them as well, even though they are not the Warframe that it should be. But yeah, that is all about subsuming, so let's now go to the next function, Invigoration. To keep it plain and simple, Invigoration is the best buff to any Warframe, but sadly, it is gambling. Let's first look at what we need. First thing we need is the Helminth Invigoration Segment Blueprint. 
again from the brother at Necrolisk. To get it you need to be at least master rank 8 and rank 5 with the Entrati family, plus you need 30,000 Entrati standing. You also need some resources and 24 hours of waiting when you start crafting the segment in your foundry. Once it is done, you can get the segment to the helminth and start invigorating warframes. The invigoration menu is right below where you sit and it is very easy to use. Every week there will be 3 random warframes you can invigorate. This week for example there is Atlas, Caliban and Lavos for me. If I go over them, you can see the buffs I will get by invigorating the warframes. Plus 200% ability strength and 5 jump resets for 7 days is quite good for Atlas. I also love the one for Caliban. Plus 250% damage and plus 25 heal rate. Bonkers. And the last one, Lavos, is even more insane. Just look at those buffs. On the left you can see how much time you still have to invigorate those warframes, so yeah, do it if you can, it is so much fun and promotes playing as that warframe. Below the 3 warframes there is a meter with 10 slots, currently I have 8 filled out and 2 empty. With every invigoration you will fill one up and at 10 you will be able to invigorate a warframe of your choice. Let me show you. I invigorated Atlas and Caliban to reach the end of the meter. Now I can invigorate my favorite Warframe, Mirage, with the last one's ability. So Lavos is by choosing the new option of Overriding Mirage. This is an insane buff, really, but remember the buffs will go away in one week's time. In the meantime, destroy everything you see. A few little facts that I also should mention here are, you can invigorate normal and prime Warframes as well, even if the pictures show only normal Warframes. You can have only one invigoration on a Warframe at once, so be careful what you get on the override ones. Once you use it, the override meter will be depleted and you will need to invigorate 10 more Warframes until you can do one of your choice again, so watch out. There are 13 abilities in total and we will go over each one of them. First I will name the ability, then tell you about the ability injecting cost and then I will mention some good uses of them and for real some of the abilities are playstyle changing. We have already went over how to inject the abilities and everything regarding Helminth, but now let's look at the abilities with the first one here, Empower. Empower is an amazing ability you get right after you get the Helminth at tier 0. To inject the ability you will need 18% calcs, 6% pheromones and 6% bile. The ability is quite easy to use. When you cast it, you will get a 50% strength bonus to your next ability cast at a cost of 25 energy. The ability is obviously a very nice addition to every Warframe that has abilities that are a bit mech, but there is a sad part as well, that being that it will only increase the strength by 50% and not more under any circumstances so you can't put mods on it or increase it in any other way. That's it. Infested Mobility is unlocked at tier 0. For it you will need 10% Calx, 14% Pheromones and 7% Bile. But it does is quite broken sometimes. It costs 50 energy and increases your sprint speed by 60% and your parkour velocity by 30%. This makes your Warframe's fastest fuckboy the ability sadly lasts only 8 seconds but obviously can be increased for more, so just run boy run. Imagine being goss and using this ability. Just stop. Master Summons is in my opinion one of the best abilities on this list. You get it at tier 0 with the helmet and it only costs 6% oxides, 12% calcs and 5% bile. But the ability does is as follows. For 50 energy you will revive your pet when it is down from anywhere to the max health. It will also teleport your pet to you right away. So yeah, this ability is one of those abilities I myself, as a Max Master Rank Legendary 2, use in almost every high level mission because no one touches my kitty Natsu and he stays alive. Sadly this ability only works on pets that have a revive cooldown though, so say goodbye to your sentinel still. Rebuild Shields is an ability you will unlock at tier 2, for which you will need 14% Calx, 13% Pheromones, 24% Bile. 
The ability is quite straightforward, restoring shields on use for 50 energy. The ability has a 12 second cooldown and efficiency mods also reduce the energy used. Getting this ability on Hildrin makes her a massive energy reactor since her shields are at the same time her energy source. An amazing option for every Hildrin main or a Chad muscle enjoyer. Perspicacity is an ability you will unlock at tier 3, which will need 5% oxides, 5% pheromones and 15% bow. It is a very straightforward ability to use, making your next hacking attempt succeed automatically for 25 energy. Efficiency makes this ability cheaper and it also has no cooldown, so perfect for a sortie or any other mission in which hacking speed counts very much. Energized Munitions is an ability you will unlock at tier 5 for which you will need 5% Oxides, 15% Calx and 10% Synthetics. This ability costs 50 energy to cast and will make your weapons 75% more ammo efficient for 5 seconds, which is great for fast fire rate weapons but also terrible since the duration of the ability is extremely short and there are not many uses for it in my opinion. It is still fun to use, not gonna lie though. Marked for Death is an ability you will unlock at tier 6. For it, you will need 15% Calx, 15% Synthetics, and 50% Bile. It stuns and marks an enemy at a cost of 50 energy. When the enemy is damaged, all the targets in a 10 meter radius receive 75% damage dealt to the enemy at max. The damage is capped at 75% of the enemy's maximum health if its health is at max which means you need to find the strongest target in your vicinity and kill it. To put the idea into practice, an enemy with 100 health will deal 75 damage to enemies around it. An enemy with 10 health, for example, and 100 health at max will however deal 10 damage to the enemies, which is not that great. A bit of a lame ability at this point if you ask me, since it was nerfed into oblivion, but it is a great thing to remember the good old days as Ash. This ability, marked for death, is also extremely complicated, so I recommend googling everything and looking for the ability on the wiki. Expedite Suffering is an ability you will unlock at tier 9, for which you will need 10% Oxides, 37% Biotics and 30% Bile. The ability is useful when using high damage and fire rate status weaponry. When an enemy is affected with the bleed or toxin status, you may use the ability to not wait out the whole duration of the effects. You can make them take effect in a moment, dealing full damage. A cast costs 50 energy, reduced with efficiency mods. The ability works in a 12 meter radius at max, which can be increased with range mods. The bad part is, it only works at a 45 degree angle, so the enemies must be in front of you and quite close but it is still very useful. I like this ability. Parasitic Armor is an ability you will unlock at tier 11, for which you will need 50% Oxides, 20% Pheromones and 20% Bow. By using the ability, you will sacrifice shields for armor with 100% conversion at max. The ability will stay as it is for 25 seconds. A cast requires 50 energy, downgraded by efficiency mods, and the duration is increased with, obviously, duration mods. Ability Strength also applies here, altering the conversion rate, for example, at 200% Ability Strength, you will get 200 armor for 100 shield points. Insanely overpowered, with the only bad part being no shield regeneration. Hideous Resistance is an ability that is freaking amazing. It is unlocked at tier 12 and it costs 23% Calx, 45% Synthetics and 14.5% Bile. What it does is insanely useful, for 50 energy it will remove 10 negative status effects affecting you or will protect you from the next 10 negative status effects. Voracious Metastasis is an ability you will unlock at tier 13. For it you will need 12.5% Calx, 35% Biotics and 25% Synthetics. The ability is very team friendly since it does two things. The first and main thing is, well, it restores your health by 500 points over 10 seconds, which is 50 per second. The other function of it is that it will also restore the amount of energy you use with this ability, which is 50, to the players in the affinity range around you. 
Because of this, you shouldn't use efficiency or duration mods that are positive since they extend the time of the ability used or lower the amount of energy you give to your squad mates. A very peculiar ability indeed. The Sickening Pulse ability from Helmand unlocked at tier 14 is quite interesting. It will cost you 25% synthetics, 30% pheromones, and 45% bow. It costs 50 energy and it adds more stacks for all the status effects except bleeding, heat and toxin status effects which are duplicated and outfitted with refreshed timers. A couple of these status effects act differently. Heat status effects for example are combined and doubled and the timer of all heat procs is refreshed. The current toxin and bleeding status effects affecting the enemy are combined and work as a standalone proc that cannot be affected by this ability again, so you can quadruple the effect. Electricity and gas status effects add 10 stacks with each proc in the stack doing combined damage of all the other procs already applied to the enemy. For real, this ability is hell confusing, so I suggest throwing your eye on the wiki page. You will need it. And finally, the last ability, Golden Instinct, is unlocked at tier 15 and it is the dream ability of every Warframe completionist. For it, you will need 25% Oxides, 25% Biotics and 25% Synthetics. What this ability does is freaking awesome. Upon casting, which costs 50 energy, it will scan an area of 200 meters around you. It will scan for Aton Sculptures, Medallions, Cephalon Fragments, Curious, rare crates, and even more. If anything is detected, it will spawn a void spark that will point you in the right direction. If there is no void spark, the ability will simply state that the land is barren. I myself love to use this ability with Limbo, and I use it regularly to farm Forma from rare crates on Lua and in the void. There is so much Forma you can get this way. It's insane. But yeah, that is it. I am 100% sure I screwed up at the description of some abilities since they have so many details that are hidden from the naked eye. I recommend you view this video as a showcase of every mod, so don't just go in with oh my god I know everything now. I recommend really visiting the wiki, really, or try to ask some other players about the ability so you have as much information as possible. Hello everyone, my name is Quad and here's just a quick video to let you know what exactly Archon Shards are and how they work. Archon Shards are materials you can only get by doing the weekly Archon Hunt missions after you complete the Veilbreaker quest. The Archon Hunts are basically the same as sorties, just harder sometimes. At the end you will get one of the shards which you can see beforehand in the Archon Hunt menu. There are three kinds of shards, Azure, Amber and Crimson, and you can do extremely badass stuff with them. But before you can do anything with them, you need to craft the Helmand Archon Shard segment, which you get after completing the Wellbreaker quest. The segment needs to be installed into your Helmand, which should be the easiest thing to do. Sit in the chair and go in the upper left corner, and now you can install the shards. You'll be able to install 5 shards at a time, and each shard will give you one buff you can choose. If you have the blue Azure Archon Shard, you can choose between plus 150 health, shield or armor, plus 50 energy or plus 5 health regen, obviously per second. The yellow Amber Shards are more performance focused with increased energy orb and health effectiveness, ability casting speed and parkour velocity, which sounds very freaking fun. And the last Crimson Archon Shard is insanely powerful since it can get you plus 25 increased damage for a specific weapon type, plus 10% ability strength and plus 10% ability duration. Yeah, it is just insane. Try and imagine having 5 Crimson Shards on Rhino or Mirage and max ability strength. We thought we were gods but we were just false gods. There is another version of the Archon Shards, the Tau Forged version, which give you double the effect of the normal Archon Shard, so 20% strength increase for a Tau Forged Crimson Shard for example. It's insane, but yeah, you only have 20% chance to actually get the Tau Forged version of the Archon Shard after you kill the Archon. So yeah, there's a lot of gambling here. 
if you want to change the abilities you have with the Archon Shards, you can also get them off by sacrificing some Hellman resources that you feed the Hellman, so you also won't waste anything. Please let me know what you think of them down in the comments. I thank you for watching, please like, comment, share or maybe unsubscribe and also have a very nice day. Bye guys! Having 5 times parkour velocity and Tau Forged, that would be fucking amazing.